The people of the Black Mountains are having a hard time of driving off the Turkic superpower of its time from the lands. Losing a crucial battle to secure an ally city. But the war was not over. And there is more than the eye can see. Although Alauddin Abbas beat the Montenegrin army back to their city, the army was all mostly intact. An opportunity that Pahomidze used to recall back his forces and secretly march back to Mostar. In the depths of the night, they marched without being noticed by the Ottomans. The Montenegrins went up to the Ottoman camp in the forests and ambushed their army due to their inability of building fortifications due to the terrain. Once again, the Ottomans were caught in a nightly ambush from Pahonije's Kalim, crushing their army and killing its commander, the talented Alauddin Abbas. This was a huge loss for the Ottomans, losing a prominent figure in the region that could secure them the territory for the empire. Now, it would be much difficult to take this hard and rough area of the Adriatic coast. From this day onward, Parmidze would be known by many Turks as the Knight General. Seeing the successes of the Prince Bishop against the rated foe, the people of Mostar held a great assembly of their nobility and agreed upon joining the Bishopric of Montenegro. They themselves, being Montenegrin by nature, made most of the region united under one banner. Nicanor, however, pushed for the common assemblies to put Omer Semsi as the governor of Mostar. A move that was intended to halt Ottoman aggression in the area, as well secure a strong ally in his power struggle with Bahomidje. This, however, failed, with the people of Mostar disliking having a Muslim ruler over the city, causing chaos in the region. In Montenegro itself, this caused a controversy that led many of his supporters changing over to Pahomidze's side. The Turks, realizing the strife going on, assembled two strong armies and attacked the northern defenses north of Montenegro. Not able to send aid to the strongholds, they fell easily to the enemy, where they began to encircle the capital, ready for a siege. Seeing no other option, Pahomidze sent a diplomat to the Ostrans, asking for aid against the Ottomans. At the city of Lebach, its governor, Nandrich, Seeing the urgency of the matter, sent word for troops to be sent to Pahomidze as reinforcements. Around 3,000 Italian auxiliaries were sent to aid in the siege. Venice also aided 
by transporting the troops in their war vessels. They arrived just in time for the Ottoman general Hassan and Ajredin began to bombard the city with their cannons. True to his nickname, Pahomiji sallied out of the city at night to make a surprise attack on the army led by Ajredin. Seeing that the commotion was going on on the other side, Hassan sent forward his army to assault the city through the broken walls. However, they were repelled by the Italian auxiliaries that made short work of the Turks. Unexpectedly, the Montenegrin won a miraculous victory, but not without heavy casualties. The siege of the Tinge made it so that Pahomije could not send out reinforcements to Mostar, that was being sieged by a small army controlled by Mustafa. Some Venetian troops went in support for the defense of Mostar, but they were not enough to defeat the Turks that were able to win a clear victory against Omer Selci, beheading the traitorous former Ottoman general and sending many of its population to slavery. This caused shockwaves throughout the entire Montenegrin assembly that called upon all of their tribal leaders to avenge the people of Mostar. In a few short months, Pahomije was again marching towards with his replenished army. At the same time, the people of Dobruvnik, south of Mostar, broke their alliance with the Venetians and entered in a new alliance with the Ottomans. This led the Venetians to send their troops to attack them. Mustafa was not able to aid them since Pahomije quickly sieged Mostar in an alliance with the Venetian Republic that was sieging Dobruvnik at the same time. With the winter of 1577 coming by, the Montenegrins began their main assault on Mostar. The Ottomans made a valiant defense, with most of their forces being cavalry. They, however, had employed in their ranks a Bohemian company, a unit from the Habsburg lands that offered their services as mercenaries. Mustafa tried to break the siege and run for it, but Pahomije and Nicanor struck him down with their cavalry guard. A fierce cavalry engagement ensued, leading to the death of the Ottoman general. The rest of the garrison still fought on, but sure enough, the victory was of the Prince Bishop. For a second time, the city of Mostar had been secure. This time, with Nicanor at its governor. But will they be able to hold on to it? And will Nicanor still make wicked schemes? to hold his power against Pahomije? <laughs> Find out next time in this other realm.